Hello and welcome back to another speed run with me, Groover. As you can do, as you can see, I've updated the logo for this. I think it's a bit more apt. Um, so today I've got a couple of different things that I'm doing. I was given a behavior pack by one of my supporters called Bud, and it basically adds a timer to Minecraft. Which I thought sounded cool, so I thought I'd give it a go, and I was using this for a few speedruns, you know, half of them didn't get anywhere, so we didn't really show any of that. Um, but I thought it was really cool, it works really, really well. It just throws up a timer right on the screen, right there, in Minecraft. Um, and for my purposes, that's actually more than good enough. So... As you can see, I've added the um, behavior pack to the world. That's probably going to be down in the description if you want to have a go with that. Um, I know Bud is probably going to be working on a new version. But look at it, just set up there. Beautiful. I don't need to worry about milliseconds. I'm not that kind of speedrunner. I just want a personal best. So, yeah, basically a simple start off as per usual. And the reason you get to see this one is because there's a couple of interesting strategies I want to call them strategies I made a few mistakes let's be honest I always make a few mistakes um, but I tried a few different strategies as well that worked out so just there I've just spotted a village off in the distance we're going to head towards the village get ourselves some tools organized because there's some exposed rock right here so why wouldn't you so yeah gonna, gonna get tooled up go to the village see what we can find I'm running this at 160% speed because I think a few people quite enjoyed that format before where I was running a little bit faster just so that you could get a flavour of what was going on and my commentary over the top about what my thinking was at the time in the various points. Now I've actually been streaming this on my Discord to my patrons and we just chat in the thing i do the speed running and we do the recording and eventually i chop it up like this and do a voiceover so that that's why this is like this um but i think it's actually a really nice format doing this for me it means i get to interact with my patrons and i also get to do the speed running thing for you guys so yeah heading into the village now, from memory, we had some really good seeds on this day, and also some really, really bad never spawns, as per usual. So, yeah, straight in for the golem, because I can, and I made a mistake straight away, and he's going to get me, and that was nearly the run over. I haven't been doing enough speedruns recently to really get into this, but... Yeah, I decided to regroup, run away, get organised. Thankfully on easy mode, it's not too bad. I've been trying to do critical hits wherever I can. I keep forgetting about the critical hit thing and I'm just spam clicking because it's an option in Bedrock. So, yeah, the critical hits is definitely a change. Bit of food going on here, getting the hay. Going to be having a look around for a forge, see if there's anything decent. Not sure, I can't see any. I, I always like a lot of hay. I always think having more hay is a good thing. So I do waste a bit of time getting myself some food organised. But the hay bale's so useful. You can just use it for the um, for reducing fall damage and all sorts of things. And food, it's just like the ideal food source for me. So I always go for that whenever I can. Right, getting ourselves situated out, organising the hot bar. So that we're basically ready to go to the nether, which is pretty good. Five minutes for me getting ready to go to the nether on a random seed. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. It's not the best. I've done much faster. But still, five minutes in the village wasn't exactly close. I can't remember why I start heading in this direction. I think I see some features, but I can't remember. I can't see them at the moment. Oh no, I decide straight away to go below ground. That's right. And just grab a little bit more iron on my way. Hopefully this isn't too dark for you guys. It looks actually quite good in the edit. Which is great. Oof. Yeah. Straight back on with it. You don't need to worry about your health too much. But I do need to remember to do that eating a bit quicker. That's my main problem right there. Eating. So yeah, I get really lucky. Go straight down. Find some lava straight away. Um, get organized right here. So, first things first, cooking up the iron, sorting out a beginning of a portal. 
using the lava to do the cooking rather than going and mining anything because that's obviously much much faster right and then this is where I, I normally do a very yeah that was that was annoying I normally do a very very safe version of the um, portal building which is much slower but I think on this occasion I actually I actually get enough guts to do it properly so like that I think that's what most people do so yeah flowed perfectly to where I wanted it which is great I do always get a little bit nervous about that because I've, I hate water near lava because water sees lava as an air gap and it gets excited and thinks it can flow everywhere and it's just a mess right getting this thing lit I think this method that I've got going is usually pretty good I think it failed me a little bit here yeah two attempts isn't the best but it seems to work and I don't lose my um what's the word planks I don't lose my planks over it but yeah we're going straight to the never pretty quickly on this occasion so eight minutes in well nine really and we're going to never now this is the bit where it gets kind of interesting so I stop to do my coordinates as per usual and then I kind of try and work out my orientation because I can't tell where I am so I normally have to shift click out of this or shift my way along as you can see the shield goes up the texture's all messed up for the shield at the moment Ooh, and look at that beautiful really handy but I've got absolutely no blocks I wasn't expecting to land straight in a fortress so first things first get some blocks because I need those I need those bars those safety bars and yeah <laughs> I also need somewhere to run away to occasionally right I was kind of hoping that the wither skeleton would come to me so I'm waiting here for a moment because apparently it just lost interest what can I say shouldn't have really used wood there should have used the blocks I'd picked up much much safer as in I might need the wood later and I don't want to be going looking for wood in the nether at that stage uh, magma cubes Ugh. worst thing ever honestly So, another magma cube. Can't really do much. Yeah, I feel like I could have maybe ran past it, but... There we go. It is what it is. So, a little bit of running around the fortress now. Getting up the safety bars, nice and early. Throw the sword. That's that's part, that's obligatory. Got to throw the sword at them, otherwise they, they don't know who's in charge. It's, it's speaking their language for certain. Anyway, get a skull because there are loads of wither skeletons here. So why not? I mean, there's a temptation to go on a um, on a wither boss run one day. See if we can take on a wither boss. So basically, what I'm seeing here is an absolute pile of blaze everywhere, all around me. So there's not much point. In going too much deeper into this fortress because there are lots and lots of blaze as you can see a few few clinching moments there but as you can guess by the length of the video this was not the end of me so I'm trying to work on the tactic of getting them closer to me these blaze using the shield to block the fireballs always works always good and already I've got three rods without even trying. Getting them to come round to me and then I can land that critical hit on them. So that's a bit of a four hit combo. Jump one, jump one. If, all, if both crits hit it should, it should make it into a three hit combo. Come on. This tactic usually works. They will try and pathfind to you over quite a surprising distance. Now, because I've got another one behind me, I just want to make sure that I'm safe. Because fire damage is no joke. I should really be eating about now, but... 
Here we go, it's definitely close enough. Four hits. And of course, throw throw my um, axe down, just because. I should say, I'm using a different keyboard to usual. <laughs> I picked up a couple of keyboards really cheap off eBay, and they were broken, and I fixed them. So I'm just testing out these keyboards, which is of course why I keep throwing my items at people and things. It's um, it's pretty standard. So five blaze rods, feeling quite good, trying to make a decision about what to do next. Either go further into the fortress or see if we get any more blaze spawning around here. Might as well grab the gold whilst I'm here because I haven't got any gold items on. Maybe even get a few blocks whilst I'm at it. Yeah, there we go. A few blocks, always handy. Right, so, kind of planning to go a bit deeper into the fortress. Get the blaze to come to me. I'm really looking for seven blaze rods. That's my go-to number, seven. So I've got six, which is like the flat minimum. There's another blaze up there, so let's get that one. Come on down. So seven blaze rods is going to be able to give me 14 pearls. Now there's been occasions where I've landed in the stronghold with absolutely no eye of ender in the thing at all. Right, again, I've got all of the blaze rods that I need. Decision time, deeper into the fortress, or head back out. So, yeah, the the that was quite rude of the blaze to interrupt me whilst I was thinking. But this seems like quite a dangerous kind of fortress to me. So I think the plan is head back out. Get on the way. So yeah, once again, more blaze. There are blaze everywhere. I should have really taken that opportunity to eat. Yeah, there you go. Eventually. Slowly learning more and more. But 20 minutes in, I've got all of the blaze rods that I need. The biggest problem now is one of the usual biggest problems, pearls. What to do about pearls? And yeah, these, these guys just don't even bother. Run away. Right, quick look around. Is there anything worth heading towards out here? No, there isn't. So back to the overworld. Have a little think. Have another little think. Have a whole, like, ten seconds of thinking. Why not? I'm not in a rush. Actually, that's more like twenty. Jeez. Gotta make better decisions than that. Right, back on in. Um, decide to have a run through the fortress, because I know that I need obsidian. I know I've got a chance of getting obsidian from... The fortress itself. So, why not? I'm just trying to avoid all extra damage at this point. Making my way through the fortress to get to the other end. See what I can see. Because there should be some nice chests in here that should have some obsidian in on the balance. At worst, I can probably start trading for some obsidian. But I haven't seen a single piglin yet. I just landed in the fortress, started doing my thing. So, yeah. And then decide, actually, you know what? This fortress is not safe for me. We're going to go on a different route. And the route that we're going to take is, I'm going to find an Enderman in the overworld. Another quick look, just in case. Enderman in the overworld. Find the end portal. And then go back to Never from the end portal and hope to land in a really good biome. Because I've done the bit of the never which is really difficult, which is find a fortress. So now it's time to get out. Yeah, get some more blocks. But as it turns out, I've got to stair step up anyway, which is going to take a lot of time. So yeah. <clears throat> 
find our way back out of this cave system and we're going to try and find an enderman and then go to the stronghold. Stronghold first because there's always lava in the, um, in the what you call it room, in the portal room. So there's always enough lava in there to go to the um, nether again. And there's also enough lava in there if you don't have a bucket full of lava from elsewhere. So, you know, there's always a safe option. If you can get to the stronghold, you've always got the option of getting back to the nether and getting the things that you're missing. Now, because I'm doing this with some people watching, I'm using quite a lot of torches to keep things bright so they can see what's going on. Also, if I'm playing this with a little bit of light on my screen, I can't see a thing. So, I need the torches just to get out. So that's why we've got the torches here. Normally I wouldn't bother with the crafting of the torches or, you know, anything like that. I thought, yeah, gravel. I did the usual thing with gravel because there is so much of it. I thought, yeah, that was great. Great tactics. I tried. Right, time to get out get into the overworld and see what we can see. So, actually going to the stronghold isn't a bad idea because you've got options for getting more gear as you go, like you, you're very likely to pass through a couple more villages, you know, almost certainly. So it's worth going back into the overworld to go to the nether again and get a little bit more geared up. So like last time I was in the nether I ran out of um, stone. I've got loads of stone now. Just trying to get out here. Loads and loads of stone. So, no problem in that direction at all. Just got to get back above the ground. Yeah, this stage I get bored. <laughs> it's like the, the ground was a bit higher than I thought it was, so um, we do the thing to get out. Right, this is the village that we were in, so time to have a quick look around. Now that I've got the blaze rods that I need, I'm kind of thinking towards collecting the other things that I need to go to the end. So, <clears throat> so I'm gathering up a few extra beds just to take with me, just in case on the odd occasion the actual stronghold isn't beneath a village. I think I grabbed myself four beds in total. Now, I've been doing some practicing. I think a safe number of beds for me right now is six. Because I can't always one-cycle the dragon. But I can almost always definitely two-cycle it. <coughs> right. So, this stage, looking for an enderman. It's 28 minutes in, so I should be into my second nighttime cycle. Because I was basically in the nether within the first 10 minutes, so I completely skipped that night cycle. On to the second night cycle now. And that's what I'm thinking. I know I've only got about a minute and a half, two minutes before it starts getting dark. So at that point, I'm pretty sure that I should see some endermen or something spawning. So that's, that's the bet that I'm hedging. I just want an enderman to spawn in the overworld that I can kill and get a pearl from. See, another village. Villages are very abundant when you're looking for the stronghold because usually it's all online. So the villages generally are laid out in a grid system. So what I'm hoping to find here is some more for for forgeries? Forge? Forges? Yeah, so through the back window of the forge. I nearly missed that, I don't know why. But that's super useful. So if I did find some diamonds, then I've got the opportunity of actually getting a diamond pick to get the obsidian. I'm not stuck anymore. I've got plenty of stuff. Yeah, go for an iron sword just because... A bit more effective, really. That's all. Carrying on through the village. Nothing much of interest. I've got as many beds as I felt that I needed. So at this stage, it's coming in dark. It's time to start hoping for an Enderman. And I think I remember seeing a... Oh yeah. 
I thought I'd just take a um, a random bet on this one having a stronghold below it. It was just a bit of a hope, really. Like, I'm quite far out. There's a possibility there's going to be a stronghold. So why not dig down and just see? Problem is with this one, it's probably a bit too close to the last village. And if I did go to the nether, it might take me back to the other portal. Which would be a bit of a pain. So yeah, we dig down, see what we can see. Yeah, why? 25? Very unlikely at this stage. I think I take it all the way down to Y11 anyway, just because. Yep, it's a big fat no. And then gravel everywhere. It's like a trap. So I think at this stage all I want is a few extra blocks to take with me. So that I can stack straight back out. Without worrying too much. I really really should have used those gravel blocks before the stone blocks. But at this stage I've got so many stone blocks it doesn't really matter. Okay, we're three minutes into the night time now. There'll be lots of mob mobs spawning up there. Right, time to hope for an endman. Just doing a few circles, just in case something turns up. Decide that the village isn't a good place to be. Light levels are too high. So, decide to move on out. Moving through a forest is always a pain. And I don't want to be on the ground at this stage because I could get killed. So I don't know why I cut back to the village, but I did. Probably disorientated. Right. Running through the night. Spawning, despawning loads of mobs as I go. As long as I keep moving, I should be fine, basically. Yep, veer away from the witch. Witches are super bad. I don't really care about witches normally, but in speedruns and anything where your health matters, witches and cave spiders. Oof. Horrible. Right. Crossing on over. Gonna leave the creepers behind. Lots of creepers. Yeah, it doesn't matter. No damage. I've got enough armor on at this stage that it doesn't really matter. Don't like crossing a swamp like this, but I'm heading towards the mesa. Because the mesa might have some better spawning options for things like endermen. You can see a bit further. Nice and flat, nice and dry. Anyway, there's an enderman off to my left. Why did I not see that? That's the first question. Oh, I did see it. Right. Get into the water. He's not going to follow me into the water. It's pretty safe. I'd much rather take on endermen in the overworld than in the, than in the nether. Right, so very, very lucky. Got my pearl. Time to see which way to go. And hope that the pearl doesn't break. Yeah, this was kind of annoying. Somehow. Somehow the pearl ended up in the most inopportune place. Like right on the corner of four blocks. So it wouldn't fall down until it broke all four. Anyway, we've seen what direction we need to go in. We're going to head in that direction. And hope. Basically... Once I've got a head in, I'm just going to run in that direction until I hit a village. And then at the village, I will start hoping that it's the right village with a stronghold. And all of that. Bit of food. Yeah, need to do the eating thing. Yeah, at this stage I'm thinking, I don't want the mobs, so um, I'm going to have a little sleep. Now, something that I discovered recently, and I don't know if this is a standard thing now, but if I put a, water, a bucket of water down on snow, you don't get snowballs anymore. When did that change? That is very recent. 
and it's very sad because I thought, right, I can just get loads of snowballs, all that I need is a bucket of water, zoom, loads of snow. No, nope, did not work. Had to craft myself a spoon. Which I wasn't terribly impressed with. I don't like that. But anyway, the, the snowballs are for the dragon, of course. If I make it to the dragon, then I can throw the snowballs at the dragon, making all of my hits much higher than they should be, and take it from there, basically. So that was the plan. At this stage, my inventory management's getting a little bit annoying, so I'm throwing things away. Didn't want the bones, wanted the arrows. Already got the snow, but, you know, why not? Right, down the other side of this hill. I think at this stage I might have seen a village off in the distance, so I'm kind of heading towards that. Okay, double check direction. Yeah, that's a good angle. Now, all that I need to do is stick on this angle until I hit essentially the village that I want and then dig down under the village and that'll get me to the stronghold so where are we at we're at 1200 ish and we're kind of yeah we're cutting back back towards zero zero so we've kind of gone in a bit of a circle but that's the nature of these things sometimes nothing worth really stopping for here So, going towards this village, because I kind of assume that actually, it's based on the angle of the pearl, it's the next village that I want, which would be in a straight line away from this village. I'm stopping off here just in case there's a forge with anything good in it. And the answer is, there's some stuff in it, but it gives me an opportunity to clear up my inventory more than anything and organise my boots. But I'd have really liked some obsidian in that. I'm pretty sure you can get obsidian from those forges. So yeah, just double check in that village. No extra forges. Time to move on. No point in hanging around for the golem. I don't need any more iron, really. Double check my heading. Pretty much a straight line from the previous village, so I know that I'm getting close. I can be pretty certain the next village over is going to be the one which I need. And I keep saying it's village because 9 times out of 10, the stronghold will generate below a village. That's just the way that it is. At least on bedrock. I'm pretty sure it didn't used to be like that on Java. Okay, so I see the village in the distance and I'm going to assume that is the one that I want. Let's just get there and see. No point in throwing the pearl too often, because every time you throw the, the pearl, or the eye of ender, sorry, there is a chance that it's going to break. And then that's it, you've kind of ran out of options then. I don't understand why it's raining in the desert, but apparently it is. That's how it be in the Minecraft world. Okay, there's the bell, which is usually where you want to dig under. I'm just having a little run round just to make sure that I haven't missed any forges and then I'm going to head back to the bell and I do I start digging and then I think I've got to check this I've got to check this because if it isn't this village it's the next one I don't want to waste more time but there you go the pearl goes down so that's where we go so this is the stronghold coming up decide to actually take a little bit of care with my life at this stage <laughs> rather than just digging straight down which is the usual way for me I probably should have just dug straight down there but I figured I'll go towards the wall and then stair step my way down a little bit just to be vaguely safe it's a much bigger room than I anticipated and surprisingly bright so I'll get to this stage Ugh. I really, I really don't like skeletons. They're just a pain. I let the creeper do its thing, but that was a bad idea because then it sets off a load of, um, a load of these guys. Ugh. Darn things. Horrible. 
Right, I think they're all gone now. Time to make a run for it. Head towards the light. Get super lucky. No spawner. What the heck? No spawner. Okay, time to block up the door. Reorganise my things and my thinking. I'm going to put my um, Eye of Ender in there because I now know where the end portal is, so I'm not going to stress it. Time to make a new portal. Sadly, I have no water. As you can see there, I have no water. Classic mistake. I could have sorted that out ages ago. Right, I'm organising my inventory so that I've got the things I need to do the dragon kill all in one place. I don't need to take any of that to the end, it's pointless. Or to the nether, it's pointless. Need to put some blocks in there. Need four obsidian or three obsidian. I like four because it just speeds things up. Right. Suddenly realise, no water. Gotta go and find some water. Now I'm hoping that the stronghold room or the portal room is in a good location. So we're going to go up in that direction and hope and it works. That's another good thing. The um, lava in the stronghold or in the portal room there is pretty protected from most things. So I'll get exactly what I need within a few seconds. Which is great for me. Right, having another think now. What do I need? What don't I need? Just emptying out some rubbish. Thinking about where I should be building this. I'm going to build it next to the lava. Because I don't want any mistakes at this stage. I want to be 100% sure. That one had a... What do you call it in? One of those horrible grey things. Somebody's going to have to write in the comments what they're called. Brain. Can't. So just making sure that I've got everything right and where I'm going to put the water. I should have, I could have done that way better. But anyway, it's not my favourite way to build a portal at all against a wall. Doesn't suit me. Loads and loads of lava here. I mean, we've got nine bits of lava just in that middle bit alone. If I'd taken that one out before, then I would have been able to do this portal in one run without having to stop and move stuff. But... Hey ho, that's how it be. One there, and one there. Right, put away the water. Time to get ready to go back. I figure that I've got enough um, iron and things for a flint and steel, so I'm doing that. Right, a little bit more tidying up of the inventory. I'm taking the gold on the off chance that I find some piglins and I can do some trading to get that obsidian. Or the crying obsidian, that'll do. Crafting up a bit more of the gold. Right, time to go. Now what I'm hoping for is a warped forest. Warped forest would be perfect, or at least one somewhere where I can see. Right, writing down the coordinates. And there we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Delta. Just what I didn't need. Really horrible one as well, in my opinion. Not good. We're right down at lava level. I'm having a good look around. I think I can see a soul sand valley off in the distance there. Not nice. Really not nice. So, yeah. This is basically me for a bit. I'm trying to find my way out of here. And I make a bad jump. A really bad jump. A horrible jump. And then I die. And that is the story of this speedrun. Very, very sad ending. I'm sorry. But good run. Interesting tactics. Fun to do.